met the doctor's error. Like my doctor knew I was in recovery and I was like, I need this monitor. Don't leave it up to me. It needs to be up to John, my case manager or Eric, you know, and the doctor, it's up to them. And so the doctor comes in, another doctor, and he's doing rounds and he said, I'm your pain manager, doctor. He goes, can I bring in a pump? <laughs> and I was like, oh, a pump, okay. <laughs> you know, that's where my mind goes. And I yeah. was like, no, did you read my chart? I'm in recovery. And I was like, I would have loved to sit in the room. Da, just, da, da, just, da, da, da. <laughs> oh, this is nice, thank you, doctor. And I was like, no, I'm in recovery. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh no, you're in pain, you might need it. You, you want me to get what you want, I'll prescribe it right now. Wow. So there's some of the, uh, doesn't understand even within working yes. industry what he absolutely should. Exactly. You know, uh, the thing that I was looking for the most was that, that connection with somebody that you know we're all we, we feel like we, there's something missing in all of us like in the people that are in recovery there's they just feel like something's missing and I felt like that my whole life and growing up you know that's what pushed me to look for that camaraderie and I found it in gangs in my last prison sentence I went to prison for being high two and a half years but uh in that time I mean it's it's I had that spiritual awakening and you know the, the unfortunate thing about prison is most prison programs the AA is not strong and so I delved into that book and I did it on my own because I didn't I could I didn't have a sponsor you know I didn't I didn't understand but I tried to do it the best I could and I did it and I've done this I had done the steps and it was different I was in prison and I finally got to a yard and they uh one of my friends that I had been in there with he's my homeboy that's the way kind of way we talk but like he he was in there and I had done a lot of time with him and uh his name was Diablo and in, in Spanish that means devil and uh so we're we're sitting on the yard and uh you get an hour of wreck every day and you're so we're sitting out on the yard and he's he's sitting there with me and this is a man that i've basically grown up with you know from prison to prison and he just looks at me and he says man there's something different you don't belong here anymore selling the drug i could never make a profit i was always yeah you know you using what's that you were using <laughs> yeah and then you you know you get money from it and then you buy ecstasy or trade it with the ex dealer or then you buy alcohol with the money and so you're like where's all the money and where's all the <laughs> what's left there's nothing left so i wasn't a very good businessman when i was a dealer <laughs> i don't think any of us were i went into that, that cell and i i have known about alcoholics anonymous and all that and i walked in there and i was it was just that moment i had that moment of clarity man and it, it was like i was like man you're here again you just spent so much time, and I did, I had spent a lot of time in prison, and, and I was right there again. And at that moment, I had a spiritual awakening, and, and the book was there, and it was the, it was the jail-style big book, the little one, and at that moment, I was okay. You know, I was, I had, right then and there, I, something just, it was gone. And no matter what happened with the case that I had just caught, I had caught another felony case, um, I was okay with it.